All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's enablement session. We want to talk a little bit about our the results that was re, that were recently published from Gartner when they researched and produced a magic quadrant looking at enterprise agile planning tools for 2019. Uh, awesome results. GitLab they they view us as a visionary in the report. And if you're interested in you know, if you're seeing this, you want to download the report. The link on this screen uh, will take you to. Uh, a page where you can download the report and read it in full, uh, which may be useful if you're trying to analyze or think about what, what Gartner had to say in their, their view of the market. Uh, if, but to dive in, what's real exciting about this is you know, where we position and where we come out in the overall view. Uh, they, they looked at the market, they added a number of interesting new vendors to the market, uh, and as they looked at it, you know, they added uh, ones like Digite and, uh, and TCS and others are on the market, but GitLab is over in the bottom right hand quadrant, over to the right as a visionary. And, and what's real exciting about this is, it, is, it, is Gartner sees, and I, what I see in this, this result, is how they can see agile planning fitting into the breadth of what we do and the breadth of how GitLab is trying to solve uh, enterprise agile planning in conjunction with software delivery. Uh, if you go into the issue that we, we use to document the training, you can see some more of the details that are outlined here. But on our public facing page, where we talk about the Enterprise Agile Planning Tool Report, we're summarizing this. Uh, you know, I think part of what is powerful is, is how we're continuing to evolve to support both portfolio management and agile planning. And it's something that when you talk to your customers, you can use this as a way to reinforce where we're going and how the analyst community is starting to recognize our vision and our vision as a you know, single application that addresses all the different stages of the life cycle. Uh, Colin, you, you've been on other, you've had other points of view on this. What, what, what sort of, what's your perspective on reports like this and, and what it means to be a visionary? Yeah, so thanks, John, and, and hey, everybody. Yeah, so I, I have to say as a, as a former Gartner analyst that, you know, the visionary quadrant in particular is always something that is one of the more interesting uh, areas as markets evolve. It's, it's exactly kind of what it says on the tin. Uh, that horizontal axis, when you're looking at a magic quadrant in particular, um, if, you, if you look at the bottom, it says completeness of vision, right? Um, that is talking about um, and describing how the Gartner analysts see how individual vendors and, and their products, their respective products, uh, combined strategies are aligned with the Gartner view on both on future requirements in this market, where it is headed, where the puck is, is going uh, directionally. So the further to the right, right? Is, is critical to kind of emphasize, particularly if you're sharing this with, with prospects and clients, because that's, that's what we're all about. It's also uh, frequently in, in markets that are changing rapidly, uh, the area where it's, it's not uncommon to see leaders emerge in future years, right? If, these, if, if folks are further to the right on the magic quadrant, they are the ones uh, more closely aligned with with emerging market trends, uh, so I think that's that's important to kind of emphasize there. Awesome, thank you, Colin. I I, I think it's uh, it's really it's powerful. When you read the report, you'll see the details of of how Gartner evaluated all of the different players, and and if you think about it, the the leaders have even changed, right? You can see how at Agilecraft and Atlassian are in the top half of this, and Agile Atlassian just acquired Agilecraft. Clearly, they're trying to work their way back over to the right. And as, as we continue to compete and grow and develop our capabilities, I expect to see GitLab move further to the right and further up over time. Uh, if I read, when I read the, you know, the, the Gartner's, you know, the analysts' uh, strengths and cautions, I think they're, they're, they acknowledge where we're at and they acknowledge the, the breadth of our vision, where we're going. And, and the power of, of working on the complete life cycle. So I, yeah. I want to make sure you have that. Yeah, go ahead, Colin. Uh, yeah, John, I, and I also just wanted to, to reframe uh, or help folks uh, with some additional kind of uh, contextualization about this type of report from Gardner. Um, one of the things that 
uh, you want to, to always kind of keep in mind versus things like critical capabilities or other kind of product oriented evaluations. The magic quadrant specifically is looking at not just you know the vision and the, the current state of our current deliverables and the product itself. Remember that or keep in mind that the magic quadrant is also looking at uh, the company itself, looking at its attributes, its performance, its other elements of its ability to execute you know, on its vision as well. So it is a it is a much stronger or comprehensive statement than what I often found as an analyst. <laughs> People often looking at or describing the magic quadrant is just you know taking a look at the product element. It's really important to keep in mind that the magic quadrant is is a statement, is an opinion on the company as well as the product, right? Current state and future. Um, that's that may be something that you may want to want to. Uh, bring up in those kind of conversations. Yeah, that's, that's that you're exactly right. Now, one of the other things I want to make sure I, I, that you all understand that you've contributed, we, we believe everyone can contribute and you have contributed to, to where we are on this. And the way you have is, is with the customers that you work with and their reviews and feedback. One of the things that Gartner has implemented as they do this is they always ask for customers to provide reviews and they interview and they talk to customers, they get data. And, and they've evolved as to how they do that. Today, they do it in what they call, uh, what they call their peer insights process. And, and, and in that, and this is a screenshot from this, and I'm, I'll, I'll put the link up as well, but when it's public. And, and in the enterprise agile planning tool space, as of today, we've had 62 different reviews evaluating from peers as to where we're at. And, and these are your customers, these are people you work with, and, and frankly, we would love to have more. Uh, I would love to have you know, more than you know, the other competitors on this chart. And in fact, if you look at it, we have a 4.5 rating, which you know, is pretty awesome when I see this, and I'm, I'm ecstatic about this, and I follow it closely. Uh, I don't know, Colin, you've, been, you've seen the evolution of this part of the, the evaluation process. Uh, any, any comments on how important this is to the way it works? Yeah, so, uh, well, so I, I'll, all I can say is basically it, it becomes one of, the, one of the data sources that feeds into uh, the analysis, right, that, uh, that drives published research, particularly comparative research. So, you know, if I put on a generic analyst hat, Right, and looking at all the different uh, information sources that we would, right, we'd always be looking for um, things that connect, things that diverge, right? Uh, if we're we're getting positive feedback or what have you from one direction or the other versus what we see uh, in, in peer review channels, that was always an important kind of signaling mechanism. But I think I think just as importantly. There's a couple of things to kind of keep in mind around Gartner Peer Insights. Number one, participation, growth of, of and use of this information continues to grow. Uh, year over year, the company is investing heavily in this kind of capability. Gartner, speaking about Gartner, um, and their efforts to driving traffic and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it also has been uh, reasonably popular, as far as I can tell anyway, with the Gartner client base. Um, Gardner also, compared to some peer review sites out there, um, does do the Gardner thing. They take extra steps to verify you know, who's saying what about what. Um, so there is a, a, a correct perception about the uh, improved credibility of this, this information compared to some others. Yeah, thanks, Colin. I appreciate that. So this is, a, again, I think a resource for you to use or to be aware of that as you talk to your customers, you know, point out, you know, this is what peers are saying about us and our capabilities in the agile planning space. And this is all public information that Gartner publicizes and it's available. And in fact, if we get more reviews in this space, we could end up being a uh, customer choice similar to what we were with the ARO uh, review.
But uh, with that, I want to pause. I want to get back to the, just sort of the cover on this and pause the recording so we can go into some other questions. Uh, but for anybody following this and watching on YouTube, if you do want to download the report, love to have you download it. Uh, it's at bit.ly slash gitlab dash EAPT. Uh, you can download the report and read the details on your own. And with that, I'm going to pause the recording. If I can.